So let's say you've done the split squat with the knee down on the floor on a cushion and the other foot forward and you're able to go vertically up and down. You can add weights as time goes by as you get stronger and more efficient with the action and you're able to do that just nice and, and almost perfectly. And you want to try and maybe bump it up a notch in terms of the intensity. Well, that's where an elevated surface for the back leg comes into play. The movement is almost identical with the exception of the back foot, instead of resting on the floor, is going to be resting on an object like this 12 inch box. So what I'm going to do is position myself so that my leg is directly, the knee, hip and torso are in a straight line of my supporting knee. And I've got a small cushion, you can use your, your workout towel or perhaps if you can take your shoes off in the gym, you can put your, the toe of your shoe or the heel of your shoe here, just anything that's going to give you a little padding so you don't come down and smash your knee into the ground when doing this. It gives you a nice soft indicator of how deep to go also. Meanwhile, the forward leg is going to create a right angle so that the heel itself is going to be directly, or the ankle is directly underneath the middle of the knee. So we should see the shin itself be pretty vertical, just like the torso, head, shoulders, hips, and that back knee all being vertical as well. So in this position, you can at first maybe use a dowel to give you a little assistance and drive straight on up and then lower back down again. Once you find that you can do it without assistance, then we get into just body weight. And then after that, we can load into weights up at the shoulders and make you top heavy so that your torso and the muscles surrounding the pelvis and the ribs have to wake up a little bit more to keep you stable. Or if that's too much, you just get the weights down by your side so you're a little bit lower center of gravity, kind of like a pyramid with a big base and a small top. We can keep the weights down low to make it a little bit more manageable. So as weights get overhead or up by the head, the stability and balance becomes more demanding. So we can play around with that a little bit while you do this movement. But again, in this split squat with the rear leg raised, I'm really trying to focus on the forward leg itself. So I come up into this position and then I just lower that knee back down again. And what we'll often find is that when people do this, they'll have their foot in too close and the legs will be in really close in. We want to take a fairly good step having that knee right there, right angle here, and watch out that this isn't pulled in. So that right angle at the knee is essential. Getting into that position, driving straight up, coming back down again. And of course, you're probably going to find that one leg is a lot stronger or more coordinated, has better balance or whatever the case may be. It's going to be a little bit different than the other side. So you might want to start to focus on the weak link in this whole chain reaction of motion. Rather than always focusing on your strengths, try to bring the less coordinated side up to be as even as the opposite side. So in essence, you're becoming ambidextrous with the split squat. Assess before, do the movement, reassess what was the outcome.